In the name of our loving God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, welcome this morning to Atonement Lutheran Church Online. Today is All Saints Day when we remember everyone in God's family, those who are alive in the world today and those who have gone on to be with the Lord. Those who have died in Christ have finished their journeys. They've won the race and their baptism is complete. The rest of us are united with them in the family of God, which is the one holy Catholic Church, the body of Christ. I'm Pastor Scott, and on this All Saints Day, the color of the day is white, like the robes of the saints in heaven. Later on in the service, we will be lifting up in prayer those saints in our faith family of Atonement Lutheran Church who passed away and finished their faith journeys this year. As the first Sunday in November, today is also Seminarian Sunday, and we will be hearing from our seminarian intern pastor, Estelle Kane, who will be bringing us the message this morning. She will also be leading us in a blessing of the animals at the end of today's service. You may want to corral your pets after the Lord's Prayer so they can receive the blessing too. Intern Pastor Estelle will also be setting up a labyrinth outdoors at the church this afternoon. For anybody who wants to have the spiritual experience of walking a labyrinth, you can stop by the church from 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. And of course, masks and social distancing will be observed. A full bulletin is available for your use with music and prayers for today's service. You can view it or download it by clicking on the link under the live stream on the home page or clicking on the events tab at the top of our website www.discoveralc.com. This Saturday, November 7th, our youth group will be meeting at 1 p.m. at the church outdoors for some games and fellowship and discussion. So bring a blanket or a lawn chair and wear your mask if you'd like to attend. Also, email or call intern Pastor Estelle Kane this week. As I mentioned last week, we will be returning to having Sunday services at the church property on Sunday, November 29th for our annual Home for Thanksgiving celebration. People will be staying in their cars and we will be worshiping drive-in style at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. that day, and people will be able to take communion. The 10 a.m. service that day will be available to watch on the live stream for those who are staying home, but you will need to sign up ahead of time if you are coming to either one of those services. There will be a form available on the website, or you can call the office before Thursday of that week. Well, as we're looking forward to that day when we'll be sharing Holy Communion again, let us invite Jesus to come to us and share his spiritual communion. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of Holy Communion. I love you above all things, and I desire that you live in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you through the sacrament, I ask that you come at least spiritually into my heart. Trusting in your promises, I embrace you and unite myself with you with my whole heart. Let nothing in heaven or earth ever separate me from your love and presence. Amen. Well, we continue with our worship now with our first hymn on Jordan's Stormy Banks I Stand. Canaan's fair and high. 
I am bound for the promised land. I'm bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. When shall I reach that happy place and be full? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion 
in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Children's Moment. It's November 1st and this will be All Saints Day. Yesterday was, actually technically last night was Halloween. All day yesterday was Halloween, but last night was Halloween. So just checking, look what I got. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. See, I didn't go trick-or-treating because I'm too old, but there wasn't a lot of kids in here that came for trick-or-treating. So a lot of candy left over. So I'm just going to have to, you know, taste test it on a daily basis to make sure it's still fresh. And when it runs out of freshness, I'll just have to just, you know, finish it all in one sitting. So as I mentioned, today's All Saints Day. And we remember all the believers in the family of God that have gone before us. St. Peter, St. Paul, and others who we read about in the Bible, as well as many other men and women who were disciples of Christ down through the ages. Well... I know you know what this book is. It's the Bible. You better know what it is. I like reading the Bible sometimes. And as believers in Jesus, we are all part of the family of God. The Bible is a book about memory, members of the family of God. And it goes back many, many years and many generations. Let's show you. Let's see. In this part of the Bible, it talks about a man named Abraham who had great trust in God. Oh, right here. It mentions Moses, who led, God, led God's people out of slavery in Egypt. Oh, very important part. This part talks about God's son, Jesus. And the disciples, John, James, Peter, etc. We'll call them saints. Because saints are people who have been a part of God's holy special purpose. In a sense... We're all saints, but we like to specially remember them because they know Jesus and we're in the first to follow him in his teachings. What I want you to understand is that these saints are mentioned many times in the Bible and are really part of a family, the family of God. So you see, the Bible is like our family album. It tells a story of great men and women of faith in the family of God and some faith in the family that we belong to. Most people have a family album at home, so why don't you ask mom and dad, or next time you're at grandma and grandpa's house, aunt and uncle, say, hey, do you guys have a family album? Because you'll see pictures of your parents when they were little. You'll see pictures of your parents' parents when they were little. And you might, sometimes they're going to look familiar. It's going to look like a picture of you when you were little, but it was actually your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa. Some of the pictures, believe it or not, are black and white. Depends how old you are. But... I said a family album is a great way to go through and see family. And basically that's what All Saints is about, about family. So I said next time you're visiting, take a gander through the family album and see who's in there you might recognize. You might see a cousin. Post a couple pictures on Facebook and tag them and say, hey, here's a picture of you. Remember this time we did this together? They'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. But it'll still be funny and they'll smile. That's what you want. You want to make them happy. So that's what family is. Family is about being happy and being loved. So for children's prayer, be Heavenly Father, thank you for the many and wonderful saints that followed Jesus through the ages. Help us to follow their good examples and to remember what a blessing it is to be in the same family of faith. We ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks very much, and hope you have a great November.
The first lesson for today is from chapter 7 of Revelations. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb, and to the angels who stood around the throne, and the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord, who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord. You saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O Lord, you redeem the lives of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. Today's second lesson is from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will have has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowd, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is their, the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today is All Saint Day. Why do we celebrate All Saints Day? Well, to us, we celebrate because we believe that there's a powerful spiritual bond between those in heaven and the living. Many cultures observe this differently. Um, the most common one that almost everybody knows is in the Mexican culture, Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead, where they go and they sit up in the cemetery um, and they take a picture of their family members, their loved ones, and they take a candle, they light a candle, they take their loved one's favorite foods and they commune with them there. They celebrate with them and they have some time together. Um, I'm Puerto Rican, so in my culture, I remember my grandmother um, lighting candles at uh, my house, um, the house that I grew up in, and she would light a candle for Mama Abuela and another one for Mama Rosa, and individually for all those family members that have passed away. Um, I don't remember um, acknowledging at that time what did that meant, what was the meaning, except there was a lot of candles that she would light. Uh, today, today's reading is called the Beatitudes. Jesus is speaking to his disciples after attending the healing of people when he went through Galilee. Um, in chapter, at the end of chapter four in Matthew, we see how many of his followers came from Galilee, Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan to follow him after they heard of all these healings. So now he's up in the mountain. He is speaking to his disciples and he takes a moment to teach him because why not, right? And this opportunity where he made all these, um, amazing miracles of healing people and he tells them how the poor of spirit those who mourn the meek those who hunger and thirst for justice the merciful the pure of heart the peacemakers those persecuted because of him and they the disciples themselves how they are blessed he had just healed all those people that he's speaking about right now. And he sees them as blessed. This reminds me of San Martin de Porre, who we're commemorating today by coincidence. Um, he was born in Lima, Peru in 1579, and he was born of a Spanish gentleman and a freed slave. Um, 
in Panama, they would see um, people that were mixed as inferior. So he had a lot of trouble um, fitting in and he was bullied, but that did not stop him from uh, just wanting to do what God calls us to do, which is to minister to the people. And he tried and he did um, volunteered in a, in a monastery just to be in a religious community. Um, and it took him years before he was accepted as a, um, just as a, <clears throat> just as a servant alone. And it took him years after that to be able to be presented with his habits, even though people did not um, agree because he was mixed race. Um, but he accomplished it after many, many years and he was in an infirmary and there he would take care of all the sick. He would heal them back to health and then send them back. He even would take the animals that were hurt and he would heal them back to, to health and then um, let them loose again. And um, he took care of all of those six, like, sick people like Jesus did before sitting down with his disciples to teach them about, you know, being blessed. They did not feel blessed because they were sick or persecuted or justice had not, justice had not arrived to them yet. But what made them blessed is that through this, they did not lose faith. All those people at the end of chapter four of Matthew that, had, that Jesus had healed did not come to him just because why not, right? It's our last hope, just coincidence. He's here, I'm here. What's the worst that could happen? No, they went to him because they had faith in him. They have faith in him. They knew in their hearts that Jesus would heal them, that he would heal them. Just like we know that what we have here on earth is nothing compared to what we're getting when we go to heaven and we are with God. That is why Jesus is telling his disciples that theirs is the kingdom of heaven and they will be comforted and filled and have justice. We often question why we go through this situation. We question why we suffer, why we see others suffering. And to be honest, I have no answer. I have no good answer for you. And no answer that is gonna satisfy you and comfort you. But I do know, and I could tell you, that as we might not have that answer, an answer that makes sense to us, we can be sure of one thing, that our Creator, our Redeemer, our Guide is with us through it, and He is walking along with us as we feel persecuted, in poor spirit, and meek, and thirsty for justice. I have spoken before um, about my brother Angel who was killed um, many, many years ago in Puerto Rico and he was left in a ditch. Um, and while this happened, I was angry at God and I did not understand why this happened and I still don't understand why this happened. But today I can say Blessed is Angel, whom at the other end of the gun lost his life, because his is the kingdom of heaven, and he is comforted, he is righteous, he's merciful, and he is filled 
with justice. Today, earlier I shared um, what I, what my culture does to honor our family members that have passed before. So I want to invite you to um, do the same. Grab a candle, light it for your family members that have passed because they are rejoicing with God. Amen. Yeah.
And now it's time for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. And now let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now it's time for the offering. God has made a place for every single one of us around the table and in his family, the church. We trust in that promise and we live in that hope every day as Christians as saints of God who share God's love with the world. During the prayers today, you will hear the names of gracious saints who are part of our church family here at Atonement, but have passed on to be with the saints in heaven. Some were members, some visitors, but all are beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. The church was blessed this week to receive a check for over $20,000 from the estate of Lyle Johnson, who died from COVID-related symptoms back in May. Lyle, with his wife Irene, were snowbirds who held their church membership up in Fargo, North Dakota. But we were blessed to be their church home here in Florida. With the blessing of the family, the council plans to tithe 10% of that gift, which will be split between our Luther Springs Lutheran camp here in Florida, and the ministries of our Florida Bahamas Synod. The rest we plan to put towards the principal on the loan for the new building, Friendship Hall. Lyle and Irene were major donors to that project, and we're happy to report that this gift will bring the balance of that loan below $100,000. Estate giving is a great example of the communion of saints in action that even as we go on to glory in heaven, we can share God's work here on earth. If you'd like to talk about including the church in your will or legacy planning, please feel free to give us a call. Well, we encourage you to use this time to prepare your giving envelopes or to give online on our donate page through PayPal or our Give Plus giving app. At Atonement, our annual meeting on December 6th will be conducted on Zoom this year. Next weekend, we will be calling all our voting members to let you know how to receive the packet of materials, which includes the instructions for joining the meeting and how to get help if you need it. 
we'll also answer any questions you might have about our upcoming drive-in worship. Also remember that we're doing a blessing of the animals after the Lord's Prayer today, so be ready if you want to include your pets. Lord, great is thy love and mercy. Great is thy power and might. And we are so thankful, Lord, that great is thy faithfulness. with somebody that's been on our hearts lately. Maybe pick up the directory and call somebody you haven't spoken to in a while um, and just share the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you invite those who feel most unworthy of love to a seat at the head of your table. Through the humility, vulnerability, and repentance of your church, 
bring a compassionate welcome to all in need of your grace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Sustaining God, guide all people of the earth through harsh extremes in the cycles of creation, drought and monsoon, blistering heat and freezing cold. Hold in your mercy all places where lives have been disrupted by natural disasters, especially those affected by the fires in Colorado and Southern California. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Sovereign God, gather our country around a shared table this week during our national election. Open fruitful dialogue between people of every political party, place, age, and socioeconomic status, so that we may discern the common good you desire for us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, protect those whose human dignity has been denied and oppressed in our nation. Raise the voices of those who have been silenced and bring justice where power has been abused for personal gain. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, accompany those in new and unfamiliar places who need an invitation to community. We pray especially for those who have recently moved to start their first year of college, a new job, or a missionary position in another land. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Healing God, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill, especially the family of Nancy Altman, Nicole Strange, the family of Leamon Barbo, Fran Lewis, Loomis and Mother Helen, Carson Bebo, Megan Nelson, Pan and Alan Servan. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Precious Lord, you make the renewal of our lives and loves possible through your grace. Be it with those who are celebrating birthdays this week including Maureen Guffey and Russ Young, and those celebrating anniversaries. May they continue to know your joy and presence in all that the years may bring. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, you unite all the faithful in a banquet of your abundance. This day we remember all who now feast in your eternal presence especially all who have died in the past year. Polly Byers, John Smith, Renee Cathy, Jerry Stripe, Richard Miller Jr., Joe Hilton, Lyle Johnson, Rolando Fernandez, Jean Winters. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Every year on October 4th or the Sunday closest to it, we celebrate blessing of the animals. This is commemorating St. Francis of Assisi, who he saw that all creation was a gift from God and that included our animals. In the Roman Catholic tradition, he is the patron saint of animals. This year, we didn't want to just pass it by and not have a blessing. We wanted to still do it. So this year, you're going to take a more active role into the blessing. But first, I want to read to you uh, scripture from Genesis 1, verses 20 to 26. And God said, let the water team with living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing in with which the water teams and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to their kind. And God saw that it was good, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in numbers and fill the waters in the sea and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kind, the livestock according to their kind, and all creatures that move along the ground according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. Then he said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over the livestock and all wild animals and over all creatures that move along the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to give you a few seconds to grab your pets or your pet. And if you have someone in your house that could help you, that's great. If not, you can do it by yourself too. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab your pet however is more comfortable for both of you and you're going to put your hand on their head or whatever you can and you're going to say their name this is gandal one of my seven and you're going to make the sign of the cross and you and while you're doing the sign of the cross you're going to say may god bless you in the name of the father who created us all in the name of the holy spirit that guides us all and in the name of the Son who redeemed us all, may we have and enjoy a long life together. And you close with amen. So now let's do it. Gandalf, may God bless you in the name of the Father who created us all, in the name of the Holy Spirit who guides us all, in the name of the Son who redeemed us all. May we have a long life together. Amen. And you could give them a little kiss too. <laughs> and also we want to take some uh, time to say a prayer for those animals that we don't have with us um, physically anymore. So let us pray. Creator God, we want to thank you for all those animals that we had and they're not here with us anymore. We want to thank you that we had a long life with them and we rejoice remembering in, in, in those special moments that we have with them. We want to thank you for their blessing. We want to thank you for their joy. And we know, Father, that you met them in the Rainbow Bridge and you're keeping them company until we meet again. Amen. And now it's time to receive your blessing. May the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit lead you into the world to love one another, speak against injustices of all his creation, and share God's good news to the world. Amen. Peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Please.
Okay. Go in, Go in peace. peace. Serve, Serve the Lord. Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.